minus new bullet dot texture dot width. And remember, we went over this. Uh, I know it gets a little crazy, and that's divided by two. Okay. Um, and the next one it takes is a, is a y position. It's just going to be uh, position dot y plus thirty. I'll go over this in a sec. Right. Right. Okay, so what this is doing is um, when the bullet delay reaches zero, it's going to spawn a new bullet uh, with the bullet texture that we'll be assigning. Um, and then, then it's going to set the bullet position uh, to a new vector 2, which is going to be in front of our enemy ship. And then it's going to say, okay, let's take the enemy position.x, which is the top left corner of the enemy sprite. We're going to add to that the texture width of the enemy divided by 2, which is put us into the center of the enemy sprite, and then we're going to minus the, the width of the bullet texture and divide that by 2. So it's going to put it dead center in front of our ship. And the position dot y plus 30 is just moving it down the y-axis so it's lined up to the front of the ship instead of the back. Okay? Um, this I had to play with this a little bit myself to get the bullet um, spawning right in the center too to make it look right. But uh, this is kind of how it works most of the time where you're taking half of the the texture of your enemy ship, and then you're going to divide it by two, and then you're going to take your bullet texture and divide that by two, and that should get you the center of your ship on the x-axis, okay? Uh, so we're going to say, um, s um, create new bullet, and position it um, front and center of enemy ship, okay? And then we're going to make the bullet visible. So new bullet dot is visible equals true. Uh, we're going to say if bullet list dot count is less than 20, then bullet list dot add new bullet. I'll go over this in a second. It's the same stuff we went over in the player class too, though. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit here. And then we want to reset the bullet delay. So we'll say uh, if bullet delay equals zero, then bullet delay will equal 40. Because remember, uh, in the player ship, it was, we have it set at 20. But in the enemies, because we want them to shoot slower, we set the bullet delay at 40. Okay? Um, and that's it. So then we got to go back up since we created our enemy shoot function and our enemy our update bullets function. So you'll go into the update function of your enemy list here. And then uh, at the bottom, you're just going to call those two functions. So you're going to say enemy shoot and update bullets. And guys, like honestly, this is exactly the same way we set up our player class to fire its bullets, for our player to fire its bullets, except for instead of us pressing keys, our spacebar key to shoot the bullet, the enemies are just going to shoot the bullets all the time. All right? So that's the only difference. And that's it for our enemy class. Um, we do have some changes that we're going to uh, have to make to our game1.cs. Uh, I'm going to take a, a break right here, and then uh, I'll come back with, it'll probably be part three. So um, I'll talk to you guys in the next vid. All right, I'm back. Um, just had to take a little break there for dinner. Uh, this is, turns out I have like 18 minutes worth of video already into the enemy class videos here. <clears throat> so I'm not sure how many videos I'm going to break it up into, probably two or three. And um, But like I said, now we need to make some changes now that our enemy class is done, which is pretty much just like our player class. Um, we're going to have to make some changes to uh, our game one to make our enemies spawn and, and show up on our screen. So we can move over to our game one.cs and we will just jump right in. Uh, we're going to add um, a public int to the game one.cs. We can do that up here in our main. Public int, and uh, we're just going to call uh, this enemy bullet damage. Okay, and. I kind of debated on if I wanted to put this variable into the enemy class or if I just wanted to put it here. Um, I'm not really sure. I didn't think it over too well and I think I'm just going to throw it in here now. I try to not just throw random stuff because want, you want to keep your game one slimmed down as much as possible. That's what we have classes for. 
But uh, for now, I'm just going to pull it here, put it here, and we can move it later if, if, uh, if after I do some more testing and decide where I actually want it to go. Okay. So now we added that variable. Um, we need to also add another list. Um, so I'm going to change this comment to asteroid list to just uh, lists. And uh, it's going to be uh, an enemy list. So list type, um, um, the type of elements in the list are going to be enemies. So enemy. And we're just going to call that enemy list equals new uh, list enemy. Okay. Just like we did with our asteroids, uh, since we have multiple asteroids that we spawn and they're get, uh, we're keeping them in the list in our game one, we're going to do the same with our enemies, okay? Um, let's go down to our constructor and uh, <coughs> we'll just set our, our uh, enemy bullet damage variable. Um, we'll just uh, we'll make the enemy bullet damage be 5, seeing as our uh, um, player has 200 health. Uh, you know what? Let's just increase that to 10. I know we want our enemies weak, but we don't need to make them like like real weak. All right. Okay. So uh, after that, we can move down to our um, our update. So you now notice how we're doing our for each asteroid in our asteroid list. We're going to do the same type of thing with our enemy list. We're going to um, say for each enemy in our list. So um, uh, let's just comment this real quick. Updating enemies and uh, checking collision of enemy ship to player ship. Okay, so we're going to say for each um, enemy E in uh, enemy list, we're going to do the following. Uh, let's see, we're going to say, we're going to check if the, first we're going to check if enemy ship is colliding with player. Okay, we're going to say if e dot bounding box um, intersects, and you you should know about this from our collision videos. Um, P dot bounding box. Then we're going to say um, P dot health. Because what we want to happen is when uh, our uh, an enemy ship collides with our player ship, which we're like beast mode, so we should be killing them before they get to us anyways. But uh, if we're going to say if an enemy ship happens to uh, very luckily collide with our player ship, uh, then we're going to subtract 40 health. We're going to make it pretty substantial because we shouldn't be getting hit by enemy ships. And we're going to say E dot is visible equals false. So basically what we're doing is we're saying if the enemy ship collides with our player ship, <coughs> impossible I know, then we're gonna uh, subtract 40 from our player health and we're gonna um, destroy the, the enemy ship. Alright, um, what else? Uh, let's see. We're gonna say we're also for each enemy in our enemy list we're gonna we're going to check enemy bullet. Jeez bullet collision with player ship. So this is more um, and now we can see the enemy bullets hitting us because there's going to be you know at least three enemies is what we're going to start out with and there's going to be bullets everywhere and we have to dodge the asteroids at the same time so uh, if, if an enemy bullet collides with our player ship um, so what we need to do is we need to iterate through our bullet list so for int i equals zero if i is less than e dot bullet list dot count um, then i plus plus and then while we're iterating through our enemy's bullet list we're going to say if players bounding box so if p dot bounding box intersects with e dot bullet list um, at index i is bounding box then we do the following and we've done this before we did this with uh, the asteroids too uh, just down here like when the um, 
when uh, the asteroid's bounding box intersects with the player's bullet list, it, with, since we're iterating through all the bullets in our player list, well, I'll just go up here since we're working on this, uh, we're going to just keep iterating through our enemy's bullet list. So for all the bullets that are in our um, bullet list, right, we're going to keep iterating through them, and we're going to keep checking if, if uh, the bullets are going to be hitting uh, our player's bounding box. All right? And if that happens, then we want to say uh, player.health is negative or equal to uh, enemy bullet damage. Okay, see, like I said before, I don't really like the hard code stuff, so um, instead of coming down and, like, later on, if we have uh, multiple things that the enemy bullets are, are damaging, uh, we just want to be able to say enemy bullet damage instead of changing six different instances of it. We can just go up top and change the enemy bullet damage. All right. So, um, and what else do we want to happen when the enemy's bullets are hitting our ship? Well, we want to destroy the enemy bullets. E dot bullet list um, at index i um, is visible equals false. Okay, so we're subtracting uh, five health from our player because we set. Um, or sorry, 10, because we set our enemy bullet damage to 10. So every time an enemy bullet hits our player ship, we're going to lose 10 health, and the enemy bullet's going to be destroyed. Okay, and then we also need to check uh, the, the player's bullet collision with the enemy ship. I'll go over this whole thing again once we're done here.